was tagged by Barbara at 49 Dragonflies to do the hashtag my journal journey which was started by the crafting bookworm I will uh, put links to their uh, channels and their videos in the description box below and anything else that might be pertinent to this video so basically I've got a list of questions to answer and I thought if it's about journals I might as well pull out all my journals these these are my journals this this pile is about you know so it's, it's, it's a big pile uh, but the first question was when did you start making journals and then um, suggest to show the first journal you ever made I started making journals uh, the end like around November maybe of 2019 I had gotten started with mixed media and was basically making uh, bookmarks and then my aunt because the second question is did someone inspire you to make journals if so who so let's start with that my aunt saw me getting into mixed media and she sent me this that she made so we have this bubble envelope I, I should I should try to make this huh this is a bubble envelope that she painted and uh and has you know holds holds this cute little journal i'm gonna have to move one of these so i can come down a little lower huh um yeah these are journals that i've either made either made or ones that i actually use um well, and ones that i use but let's start with the one that my aunt sent me this was the very first my very first exposure to a junk journal and it is an accordion so you know no so we like that and it's just used a lot of we got some map uh, some collage some scrapbook paper it looks like because she doesn't have a printer so anything she uses is is mostly stuff that's and we got some little note pieces here with a belly band I never knew what a belly band was before that. There's a vertical belly band and a horizontal belly band. And we've got pockets and tags and heart you. I love you. Yes, because it's from my aunt. My aunt Margie. I should say her name. I mean, she doesn't have a channel or anything, but, you know, she made this and I love it. Um, a little owl under there. And uh, looks like a little shiny thing. And just a little notepad to go in there and some charms of course I went and bought like a bunch of charms we've got a library card that's been tea dyed or coffee dyed and a postcard this actually might be Ellsworth Maine yep that's up in Maine where my other aunt lives I believe my my other aunt that does the uh, maple syrup she makes me she they do maple syrup at their place and look at this the little this I've never made one of these. I should. She's it's got like some um this is just for inspiration here. Some really cool stuff. Um so yes, this was my first and then when she sent me this, she also told me, you know, here's the people I watch that you might be interested in, and that was Gail Augustinelli, I like her below, and Pam at the paper outpost. So those were the first people I watched on YouTube for um junk journals. I think this is another belly band here. And using ribbon as a little tuck spot there. Fab this is fabric here. Everything else I think is paper, burlap. That might even be napkin. And, uh, oh, she must have given me some of this because I'm like, I have this ribbon. Probably because she gave it to me. So that was my first experience with Junk Journal. And I was like, oh, that sounds really cool. And But I was already loving mixed media. And so I was like, well, I think. I can mix do mixed media and junk journaling and that would make me really happy because <coughs> excuse me uh, I didn't really want to make big canvases and stuff I started out with bookmarks I don't even know if I have any left to show you if I have any bookmarks I don't know so my very first journal was just like a little folio with like just some coffee dyed paper and some pockets it kind of was like a trifold and um, I have disassembled that and used the tags and different things. Uh, I'll try to link the video below. I think I made a video for it. Really old. Uh, it's not great. This is not the second one, but it's one of the first ones I made. Um, and I love this cover. Uh, uh, let's see. So I just, you know, so this is one of the first ones that I made. It's It has removable pages, and I just kind of put... Just things I like, like this is in here so that I can glue it down somewhere. But I might want to layer it with some other stuff. And uh, just different things. And I add to that once in a while. 
uh, and I'll answer another question later with this. Uh, see, what is your journal style? I think we can see my journal style is pretty eclectic um, and a little grungy. Like here's this one's not together yet. This is a journal that hasn't happened yet, but it needs to. <laughs> And then there's, this one is a flag book, but it's still a journal. And it's got the little girls. Um, and then we've got this one, which ended up being a glue book. But it started out just as like a junk journal, just for me to play in. And, um, and I still play in it, um, but I add all kinds of things. And I just use junk mail and just junk for that stuff. I also have art, art journals. So I do glue books, art journals, and uh, what I would call like a, um, the style of a commonplace journal where I just would like glue stuff I like, which is kind of what this one was or is. This one's an art journal. So my journal style I would say is eclectic and a little grungy at the very least. And I use my journal for all kinds of things. Uh, do you use a theme to get started on your journal? Sometimes. Sometimes I will use a theme like this one obviously had a theme But that came after I don't know that I knew I was gonna use those little girls till afterwards And I was like, oh those colors or maybe I knew ahead. I can't remember Let's see journal with a theme journal with a theme. Well, if I do them for the makers creative club, I have a theme This one was uh, the prompt Was something about rain. I really should write these things down. So this one had a rainy theme and uh, this, let's see, where's the other one? This one does not have a theme. A lot of mine don't. A lot of times I will just start making a journal and see what happens. But, um, oh, this one was blooms. And so we bring on the blooms. See, that one I did write the theme. <laughs> this one's more of a folio. Let's see, I think these are, does that open? That one opens. Does this one open? Yep, they do. So... Yeah, sometimes I will start with a theme, uh, especially if I have like a journal kit I'm using. Uh, like this one here has had a theme. Uh, this was the freebie from when I got to a thousand subscribers. So this one definitely does have a theme. It's the coffee theme with the... But sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just start making a journal and see what happens. Let's see. Uh, how long does it take you to make a journal? Anywhere from an hour to a week to a month <laughs> depends on the journal um like the one i did most recently this one took me let's see there were three videos plus the flip through plus a couple hours so one two three four five six six to eight hours probably took to make this one alone this is the most recent one on my video and this one might have taken up at least that long and let's see and it depends because it's hard to say how long a journal takes because there's the the pre like I had these papers to work with because I made them specifically for this journal. I did a lot of experimentation for this journal. So while the journal itself to put together might have only taken a couple hours, the the pre making of all these papers took longer. Um so yeah, and but I love these papers. They are some of my favorite I put everything on the gel plate for those. That was tons of fun. Uh, let's see. What is the first thing you do when starting a journal? I will usually get all my papers together. Like I've got a journal coming up where I'm going to be making a journal using the kit that I made for Patty, Patty's Garden. So I would, you know, get my digital out. Where's some of the actual journal pages? Those are the... And, um and look at the colors and find some colors that would go with it. These are all the... Okay, apparently I only printed out the... <laughs> the... <laughs> anyway, I would get out all my pages and find other pages to go with them, whether they're book pages, coffee dyed pages, or whatever. Um, I usually start with the pages. Uh, the cover might come later uh, as inspiration strikes and whatnot. So that is usually what I do. And I usually pull out way more than I'm ever going to use. Uh, what style cover do you prefer to make or use? Um, I like all the styles. Like this one Stephanie made, and it's denim. Stephanie, uh, co coffee, paper, scissors. If I can, f I'll, I'll link her, but if I can find the video where she uh, shows this, I will. Um, it's a denim cover. I love a denim cover. And then underneath the denim is hard, is hard cover. And then um, I love this. I started using this as a glue book, Stephanie. 
like grab life by the brush um, because she had some art art things in here too this is a nice eclectic it's a clean eclectic <laughs> it's not quite so grungy as what I use but I love this journal and I've started actually um, putting where are they I had some stuff in here oh that I added but I've been starting to use it. This is my um, my girl, if she builds it, this is my girl power glue book. So when I find uh, that I added to. So if I find things that are like, you know, uh, encouraging or, you know, putting women in a positive light, I will put those in that journal. She'll love that. She'll love that that's what I do with that journal. Um, what was the question? Did I... What style cover? Oh, what this is probably my absolute favorite cover style. And it is canvas. I had a canvas I got on sale. And I just took it off the thing. I took it off the, you know, it always comes on the frame. Took it off the frame and uh, painted it and did the napkin on it. And then there's some quilt batting in the middle I think and then fabric on the inside and I just love how flexible it is and that's probably one of my absolute favorites but also I like a fabric cover like this too like the one that I just showed you with Stephanie which has fabric on the outside but is a hardcover book but I just you know then I can still feel the soft fabric but have the stability of the journal cover I also like to use actual books as journal covers and not even do a lot all I did with this one is just put a little bit of stamping on it because I just liked it as it was I like the name of it it's called markings and that's kind of was my intention but it ended up being uh, junk journal January junk journal July is what it ended up being um, so yeah I, I don't know I just I like this one I didn't didn't want to spend a lot of money on canvases so I bought duck cloth you know the stuff the painters cloth and that's what I made this one out of. I don't like it quite as much as the um, the actual canvas, but it's all right. And oh, and I really like to use Amazon packaging. That's what this is. It's just Amazon packaging that's been painted, and uh, that's the stuff, the recyclable stuff that has that white stuff in the middle. So yeah, I, I like all. And this is also Amazon packaging that's painted. So obviously, I like Amazon packaging. <laughs> And even if I'm doing a fabric journal, like I didn't have the Amazon paint packaging when I made the squirrel journal, or I probably might have put that in there. So I do like to use the Amazon. So if you make a soft cover journal, what materials do you use? Amazon packaging. Uh, let's see. Do you use ephemera you get in a kit, or do you prefer to make your own? I think the way that I create digitals will answer that question for you. I like to create digitals that have all the parts and pieces that you can put together the way you want. So there's tag bases and layering pieces and some easy fussy cut pieces. See, you don't have to cut. These flowers would be really hard to cut, but they're on the background. So then you don't have to cut them out like that. And um, so, yeah, you'll see when I make digitals, I make it so that you can... There are some already made tags, but you could back that. You could cut those down smaller, back them on another tag. So I do usually have some finished tags in there because people like that. But also I have just the elements and the collage papers as well so that you can make your own tags. So like these other papers that I have here, the planer ones, I'll, I'll use those to back to make tags and journal cards that I then use the elements on. And this is actually part of Patty's Garden in my shop. And, um, and like just having elements, you'll see these in my shop sometimes. This is a members, members only one, but, um, I like to have the easy fussy cut stuff. So that is, I, I, if I have a digital kit, I will probably, if it all comes as tags and journal cards already decorated, I am more likely to dissect those and make my own. Uh, let's see. Do you enjoy participating in prompt inspired projects? Well, let's see. I think the answer to that question <laughs> might be, oh, this one has some prompt. It was uh, in Penny's, in a Facebook group I was in, they used to do, um, well, they might still do it, um, mixed media mashup, which was a prompt thing. And that's, that's what these pages are in here mostly are the mixed media mashup prompts and some blank pages that haven't been done yet. Um, 
and I have a lot of fun with those. Like that was a mixed media mashup. So I do enjoy prompt. And then there's also, oh, did I bring it over? There's also the Junk Journal January, Junk Journal July, which are also prompts. Um, and then this was, um, oh, uh, the accordion part is uh, accordion to you. But this, these were the 31 days of gel printing, which is a Burgate Coopson. And I put them all into a book. So each page here was based on a prompt. So I think I would say that, yes, I do. Oh, here it is. And then this was the um, the bingo, which was Lori, Enchanted Dreams, 71. Stop showing that. <laughs> I'm going to have to make sure I edit now. Um, so these were prompts as well. This is one of my favorite prompt books. Ooh, and then also I, I did the, um, I forgot about that journal. Last year I did the Margaret Miller Challenge. And I have that journal, which is one of my favorite journals. I can't get it out right now, but it's one of my favorite journals as well. So I'm going to say yes. I like prompt-inspired projects. Uh, how many journals have you made so far? Well, a lot. I, I don't know exactly because I've sold some. I've got some that I need to put up for sale. I've got a lot that I use. Um, like this one is just, I made it to practice doodling in. It's not per, you know, it's just gel plate prints and whatnot. And I just doodle in it. Uh, so I don't know how many. It's a lot. Uh, what do you enjoy the most about making journals? I don't know. that I don't have to make the same thing every time I think you can see that uh, like this one was just a journal that I took out the extra pages of and then decorated so I didn't even make that journal that one I just altered um, I just I like that you don't have to do the same thing every time every you get to use your creativity and everything you just can do something different every time uh, whether it's this or and, and you can find a fun book called the Turkindu, Turkindu Deuce and make a journal out of that. Um, you could take a book and create a journal, you know, whether it's spine journal or what, and, and make a journal out of that. That was also a maker's, a lot of my things are maker's creative collab. Uh, this was also one of my first journals. That one might be even before the, um, the, um, before the squirrel one, this journal here. But yeah, I think... I really like making journals. What I like most about making journals is is the um excuse me, sorry. The variety. I like that I the variety of it definitely. Uh what do you uh please tag is oh, I'm going to tag a couple people. I'm not going to say who they are because I'm waiting for their permission. Uh so if you if you want to do this, tag yourself and do it. My recommendation is that if you want to tag somebody else, give them a heads up, ask their permission. Uh, because when Barbara did that with me, I was like, "Ooh, I'm going to do that from now on." This is why I don't like to tag people because I don't want to put people out. But if I ask them in advance, then I don't mind doing it. So check the description box below, and uh, you'll see who I tagged. So you can go check out their videos, and you'll I'll link Barbara's video and the uh, original video and all the things and let's see do you want me to i could let's see oh and then say in the uh comments uh if you want me to show any of these journals like just kind of like i could do a flip through of any that you want so like this is the junk journal january junk journal july that's the blue one this is my squirrel one uh, bring on the blooms, the doodle one. I'm just going to say what they are. The autumn art, art journal, the shirk induced glue book, grandma's quilt journal, which I've done recently. So you've probably seen it. The, um, junk journal glue book, the 31 days of gel plate printing. That one you probably don't want to see. Um, and then this one I just started. This is the uh, the records glue book. This is uh, my art journal, which still has a lot to go. And then a stocking for a kitten. The monster at the end of this book. Uh, rain, rain, go away. I don't know. This one you saw. You probably don't need to flip through that one. It's fun to watch. This is a flag book. 
So when you go like that, it looks like that. And then you can go. That's so fun. I'll have to make sure I link that below too. And this is a journal somebody else made for me that I use for prompts. See, I like prompts. I like prompts and I cannot lie. And this is my blue art journal. Oh, and this is my grungy journal. This is a canvas. I did use canvas for that cover, I think, with denim. See, I said I like denim and canvas. That's the one I did recently. And this is my coffee journal. Oh, and I knit, this one also was a junk journal that I made with all junk, but I haven't done much in it. I just, I mean, actually I haven't, I think I had it sewed in, but I took it out because I didn't, I don't like the cover. Cause it's just, um, it's just too, too rigid for me. So I think I was thinking about making a new cover, but I could still use all these papers, which, you know, when, if you're thinking about a junk journal, you're thinking about things like menus, junk journal envelopes, I mean, you know, not junk drunk, you know, envelopes that came in the mail, that cheap paper, this that comes that you have all over the place, maps, more menus. So yeah, this one, I just tried to use as much junk in there as possible. And I just haven't done a lot with it since, other than take it apart. <laughs> I haven't done much with it except take it apart. Just because, yeah, I don't, I've, obviously this kind of journal cover, I don't, I don't love. I mean... As far as how it looks, I could do some gesso, some inkings. I could make it look better. I just don't like the way it feels. It's big. I like a smaller journal that holds in your hands like this size or, well, this one I like. It's taller, but it still holds in your hands nicely. Um, oh, and my quilt one. I really, that's the reason I picked use the cover for this is just because I like how it fits in my hands. So that is... That's it. Oh, and also sometimes I might do a rainbow journal. <laughs> sometimes it's just a little journal that doesn't even have a cover. It's just little in there for fun. I don't know. I have a lot of journals. Those are just the ones that I use. There's more. There's more over there that I'll be showing and putting up in my shop at some point. But I'm going out of town for two weeks. I'm out of town right now when you see this video. Anyway, I hope you all have a delightful day. Sorry for my rambling at the end. Sorry, not sorry. But just... Tell me which journal, if there's journals you'd like me to do a flip through of, I will do that. Have a delightful day. Love you.